Golston Dart. And I'm Edie Lambert. Tonight we're looking at a rise in racism targeting Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Well, since the spread of COVID-19, we've seen a surge in attacks. And while police have not called all of these incidents hate crimes, the perception within the community is that Asian Americans are being targeted. Just over a year ago, a mysterious virus in Wuhan, China starts to spread. As cases increase in the U.S., so do the attacks on Asian Americans. There is absolutely no place for the discrimination and hate crimes that we are seeing across this country. Lawmakers plead for an end to the attacks. The Centers for Disease Control makes its own effort to stop the stigma but the attacks increase. It feels like nowhere is safe right now. I grew more afraid of getting attacked than actually getting the virus itself. Experts say the situation only aggravated by rhetoric like this. I can name Kung Flu. Before the plague from China came in, you know what that is, that's the China virus. At campaign rallies and White House events, President Trump repeatedly calling COVID-19 the China virus. Those words prompting members of the House to pass a resolution last September condemning anti-Asian sentiment. The president is fueling racism. But reports of discrimination continued. By Lunar New Year, a shadow hung over the Asian American community, a chain of attacks targeting the elderly. Thoughts and prayers are not enough. Last month, California lawmakers called for action against the rising tide of anti-Asian sentiment. But just days later, the Twin Rivers School District apologized after a teacher made gestures considered offensive towards Asians. Sacramento lawmakers announced a new resolution condemning anti-Asian hate following an incident at a Chinese-owned butcher shop. Then, on March 16th, the Atlanta shootings. Eight people dead, six of them Asian women. Since then, windows at a Sacramento Asian American owned business shattered and anti-Asian messages sent to students at Whitney High School in Placer County. Now, police in Georgia say it's too early to determine whether race based hate was the motive for those deadly shootings. They are still investigating. Well, the pandemic and violence towards the American uh, Asian American communities, leaving many afraid for their families and even their own personal safety. KCRA 3 Stephanie Lind reports on the effects and the repeated acts of racial violence and what they're having. Your hair is all over the place. <laughs> Mom Letitia Lintag makes the trek from Pollock Pines to Rancho Cordova every week to cheer daughter Zayla on at soccer practice. The event, a family affair. The fresh air helping to lighten a heavy burden many Asian Americans have come to bear. My son was called uh, a racial slur that was derogatory towards Asian Americans on the school bus. The COVID-19 pandemic spawning a virus of hate in 2020, with documented incidents of harassment and assault escalating in the Asian American community. Lintag says what happened to her son is nothing new, and she worries for her family's safety. My oldest has been instructed not to walk by herself. My son's getting ready to start high school in fall and he's been given the same instructions. Asians were not only fighting the pandemic, but we were fighting racism. Dr. Carol Lee Tran is a clinical psychologist and author who teaches at UC Davis. She says constant exposure to racism and acts of bigotry can affect the brain. Awareness of racism causes us to be hypervigilant. It affects our prefrontal cortex. It affects the amygdala. These are areas of the brain that control affect and emotion. When we have these incidents, we watch them on TV, we hear it on the news, we feel all these things in our body. Trauma advocates say now felt by many Asian Americans. This has to stop. Asian Community Center Senior Services President Derek Lamb ringing the alarm. His Sacramento-based organization working to keep seniors feeling connected after a spate of coast-to-coast -coast attacks on older Asians. They feel afraid of going out because they're not sure if they will be the next target telling us nearly all ACC residents are now vaccinated to safeguard against fears of contracting COVID-19. His team also conducting telephone wellness checks. This is uh, when I was in Omaha. Reaching residents like Vicki Beaton, who immigrated to the U.S. from Taiwan in 1975. Kind of a scary and really sad, you know, and uh, uh, definitely have to be more cautious, you know, and uh, hopefully 
and uh, I'll be okay. We need to understand that the seniors' fears are warranted. Experts saying acknowledgement of mental trauma is an important first step. We want to let them know that their fears are real, they're warranted, and that we're going to find ways to help them to be able to do what they want to do to go out. So we're going to go with you. We're going to walk with you so that you can get your exercise so that you don't have to be afraid. Letitia, who is also a therapist, is now working with her child's school principal on how to have conversations with students on racism. Because this is not okay and kids need to know that that's not okay. And experts say it's important to combat the stigma of seeking help for mental health. It can start with a conversation with your friends and family and simply exercising compassion for those who might be going through mental health issues, ultimately recognizing that there is no shame in getting help if you need it. Reporting from Sacramento, Stephanie Lynn, KCRA 3 News. And according to the American Psychological Association, Asian Americans are three times less likely than other racial groups to seek treatment for mental health issues. Experts say this can be tied to a number of reasons, including the cultural stigma that associates mental illness with disability, the model minority myth, which assumes that Asian Americans are compliant and successful, also language barriers, difficulty accessing health care and insurance, and a lack of mental health professionals trained to handle issues culturally specific to Asian Americans. Against this backdrop, KCRA3's Brian Heap spoke with some members of the AAPI community to get their perspective on the current challenges and possible solutions. There's a growing outcry within the Asian American Pacific Islander communities. A lot of city and community leaders stepping up right now to address some of the issues that people have been experiencing. And we're joined right now by a panel. We have Sacramento City Council member Mai Vang. Ri Key is with the Modesto C Cambodian Temple. Also joining us is Reverend Matt Hama Hamasaki with the Buddhist Church of Sacramento. And Wendy McAnelly is a KCRA3 viewer. First, thank you all for being with us. I'd like to ask each of you about your own experiences. Uh, it, it, what have you seen over the past year? How have things been for you and your family and your friends? And I tell you what, let's just go ahead and we'll, we'll just start with you, Wendy, since you're, you're top left on my screen right now. Ever since the whole COVID thing happened, um, I remember the, the day when we watched um, the press conference from from Trump and it was called the China virus and I specifically remembering my son who's nine years old sat right next to me and started crying saying that I don't want people to think that you know China's bad and um, over the course of last year I just saw more remarks coming out and people are just you know I've gone to the grocery store and you know I made a wrong turn and somebody just ran out and called me a trick and it just little things started happening and it's more and more often now and I felt like it was now is the time when people are saying that hey it's it, you know it's freedom of speech I'm just gonna say whatever I feel like it's in my mind um, and just over the course of over the weekend i had to make a phone call to my parents and asking them to hey can you please be be just be aware of your surrounding which i never thought i would have to even make that phone call and that's what's bothering me for me as an asian american woman uh, this isn't something that's new uh, you know as a daughter of Hmong refugees and growing up in poverty and living alongside blacks and latinos i think i saw firsthand how the system was truly stacked against us I agree with uh, Wendy that um, having to call, you know, my parents and uh, worrying about uh, their safety and as far as um, our uh, congregation uh, really worrying about the older members. And so luckily uh, we have uh, wonderful organizers within our organization that are trying to schedule, uh, trying to coordinate people who can walk uh, together in case um, they need to go to the grocery store or, you know, whatever, any kind of errands uh, we are, at, we do have that heightened sense of, um, I guess, vigilance to, to try to um, pre uh, proactively uh, prevent any kind of uh, abuse or attacks to, to our members. First of all, we, I just want to um, appreciate the American government for bringing us over here really peacefully and harmony for the past two, three decades. 
But since after the pandemic, uh, people start to change, um, looking at us differently. And, you know, I used to have my kids walking uh, around Modesto Junior College without worrying about it. Now I am concerning and say, hey, don't walk at night. We're hearing that there is also an issue of underreporting of incidents like, like these. And Mai, I think you kind of just touched on that a couple of minutes ago. And I know that some members of our KCRA team who are Asian Americans have said that there might be some cultural elements that make AA PI people perhaps more likely targets, for example, uh, being taught not to complain, just keep quiet, move on. Do you think there's some truth to that? And, and how do we correct that? Let me just share that there continues to be a harmful and inaccurate narrative that paint Asian Americans and Pacific Islander as a monolithic group, like a model minority, um, at, that they don't experience, uh, that, that they're successful and they don't experience racism. And what this actually does is it, it masks the disparities among Asian Americans um, as a for example, AAPIs have the largest wealth gap when you disaggregate the data. We speak multiple languages. Our cultures are not exactly the same. And so I'm very cognizant when folks ask that question in particular, because I will say in some families, in some Asian families, our parents did teach us to speak up. Maybe in other Asian families, they haven't. And so I'm also always very careful to make sure that we don't um, come to that conclusion and saying it's a cultural thing. Last thoughts for everybody, just kind of what the, the last impression you want to leave our viewers with today. And, and Matt, we'll start with you. Uh, the last thought that I would uh, want to leave is that it's important for us as minority groups to really support one another. Of course, we want people to support uh, the Asian American community, the API community, but at the same time, I'm also asking for the API community to continue uh, to support the other communities as well. Learning to live together, understanding one another is very, very important. We are all human beings. It's not just American. We are all human beings and we share the same planet, we share the same community here in, in America. We all have our own part to do in this, um, you know, this fight for equality. And um, I, I think it's important to share our stories and I'm sharing my story, doing my part. Very well said. Thank all four of you for, for your time. We really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, these are important discussions and we're glad that you could be here with us and uh, we're glad that we could have this positive discussion together. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. So what is the impact of a simple tweet? Coming up next, why words matter and how social media has played a role in amplifying the hate and discrimination of Asian Americans.
anti-Asian bias and attack soared within just one week of President Trump's first use of the phrase Chinese virus on Twitter. That's according to UC San Francisco researchers. KCRA3's Brittany Johnson spoke with one of those researchers to dig deeper into that social media connection. How much impact can one tweet have on society? A very big impact, according to a recent study that found former President Donald Trump's first tweet about a, quote, Chinese virus led to an increase in anti-Asian hashtags and a rise in hate crimes against Asians. The study, titled Association of COVID-19 versus Chinese Virus with Anti-Asian Sentiments on Twitter and published by researchers at UC San Francisco. Dr. Yulin Xuan is one of the researchers. So I really wanted to, you know, provide evidence to show quantitatively um, how, you know, using the term Chinese virus can have you know, these, these stigmatizing effects on the community. The team analyzed nearly 700,000 tweets and over 1 million hashtags using either COVID-19 or Chinese virus from March 9th to March 23rd, 2020. The results, almost 20% of hashtags with COVID-19 and 50% of hashtags using Chinese virus showed anti-Asian sentiment. Dr. Xuan and her team found words matter. And in this case, the consequences have led to a string of attacks here in California and across the country. The growth of the number of different hashtags that were being developed and the derivatives of Chinese virus, such as, you know, Kung flu or Chinaman flu or Batman eating flu, you know, that type of additional terminology that's being used is, is really showcasing, you know, the growth in the, in the type of hate that's occurring that's really actually correlated with what we're seeing in the real world, which is this this rise in, in hatred towards Asians and, and these hate crimes that are, that are being perpetuated to them. Dr. Schwinn says one solution is counteractive messaging. Educating, you know, both the community, but also ensuring that scientists and researchers and, and the media officials are, are really not using, you know, terms that are attached to location or ethnicity so it doesn't perpetuate it further. In Sacramento, Brittany Johnson, KCRA 3 News. A year ago, the World Health Organization warned against referring to COVID-19 as the Chinese virus, saying that could lead to racial profiling against Asians when there is no blame in this. While attacks on Asian American and Pacific Islanders are on the increase, there are some positive developments. Just yesterday, Governor Newsom nominated Rob Bonta to be the next California Attorney General. If confirmed, Bonta would be the first Filipino to hold the state's top law enforcement job. And if I have the honor of being confirmed as Attorney General, that will be one of my top priorities, to make sure that we protect those who are facing the forces of hate and that we hold accountable those who would perpetrate hate violence against others in our community. The legislature now has 90 days to confirm Bonta. Well, during World War II, more than 120,000 Japanese Americans were sent to internment camps. 85-year-old Mas Hashimoto was one of them. And as Christopher Salas shows us tonight, Hashimoto has spent his entire life sharing his experience. <laughs> At a small demonstration against Asian American racism in Santa Cruz County, there's no one who knows the issue more intimately than 85-year-old Mas Hashimoto. When I was in the first grade, we were imprisoned. I'm a prisoner of war. That's Mas sitting on his mother's lap. That's his father and his five brothers. He said on April 27, 1942, during World War II, they were forced from the Watsonville home spending three months at the Salinas Rodeo grounds, and then three and a half years inside of a barrack at a prison camp in Arizona. And there were four rooms, so four different families stayed in one barrack. Each block had 14 barracks, and about 250 to 280 family members stayed in each block. Now, you know how hot it gets in Arizona? The memory of that heat and being imprisoned along with 120,000 other Japanese Americans ancestry is not a crime is the reason why Hashimoto has spent his entire life teaching about the impacts of racism. The U.S. government condoned and practice racism. Hashimoto says he's disheartened to see anti-Asian racism on the rise throughout the country, but he also says he sees communities standing in solidarity which has him hopeful for the future. We're making headways. We really are. That's, 
<laughs> Look who's here. People of all races. They're concerned. They love America, as I do. And we have to make for a, a better America. In Watsonville, Christopher Salas, KCRA 3 News. Well, now a retired school teacher, Hashimoto, still visits schools on the Central Coast, giving history lessons to his students. Really important work. Well, next, shattering stereotypes, a Sacramento filmmaker changing the narrative in Hollywood while providing opportunities for Asian Americans. And Asian Americans in need of help do have resources. There are domestic violence services, business and economic assistance, groups that focus on civic engagement or senior support. There are also social services and advocacy groups to turn to. These organizations are there for you, as you can see on the screen there. We'll be right back. Well, for years, Hollywood has been criticized for the way it has portrayed Asian Americans on the big and the small screen. Now, Sacramento filmmaker Nick Leisure is working to change that. KCRE 3's Lisa Gonzalez talked to him about how he's doing that in the movies that he's making. Possible 1089. <laughs> A clear shot is just one of film director Nick Leisure's projects. He wrote, produced, and directed that movie based on the real-life hostage situation that played out in his hometown, Sacramento, nearly 30 years ago. He was there that day watching from the parking lot at the Good Guys Electronics Store, where 41 people were held hostage inside for nearly nine hours by four masked gunmen. It's one of the things that I kind of feel like was part of my history that I got to see, and it's still the biggest hostage situation in U.S. history. Also a part of his history, growing up in South Sacramento as an Asian American, living with his Chinese mother and grandmother. One childhood memory is still painful. My grandmother got attacked a couple times. It wasn't so much as just being Asian, but I remember her getting attacked and robbed like downtown Sacramento, coming back from you know grocery store and stuff like that. So 
I understand the feeling. Now, decades later, Leisure is trying to make a difference as an Asian American filmmaker by not contributing to the perpetuation of Asian stereotypes and hypersexualization of Asian women. I'm casting Asian Americans in my films. I'm not casting them as, you know, the, uh, the liquor store owner or, you know, or the guy with the, you know, the martial arts. If I'm trying to cast like my films now, whether it's like these students that are in um, this next pace reveal movie that I'm doing, I'm casting an Asian student in there. Leisure also wants to make sure Asian Americans are no longer underrepresented on screen and in Hollywood. For me as an Asian American filmmaker too, I'm, you know, I'm pushing on a lot of stuff now, especially what's going on with the media and the whole COVID thing and these attacks that have been happening on people and stuff like that. So I'm working on a script right now that is about 80 to 85 percent um, Asian cast. In Sacramento, Lisa Gonzalez, KCRA 3 News. Nick Leisure will start shooting his next movie. You heard him mention it called Pacerville in Sacramento next month. Well, we want you to be a part of this conversation. The current rise of hate incidents and violence impacts us all. So get your phone out, scan this QR code with the camera app on your phone. The link will send you to the KCRA 3 mobile app. And if you click on that, you'll be able to share your stories and your experiences. And before we leave you tonight, we wanted to share this. It's an electronic billboard in downtown Sacramento. You can see the image of the Statue of Liberty and the words anti-Asian hate. It's not what I stand for. Thanks for joining us tonight on KCRA and KSBW for this KCRA 3 Project Community Special. Take care.